ready for Croctober. I thought I would jump in on all the Croctober fun and for each week of October, I'm gonna share a crock pot recipe. So today you can see here, I've got a pound of ground beef browning up and I am next cutting up onion and some garlic. I'm gonna show you a delicious, very unique recipe called crock pot enchiladas, slow cooker enchiladas. They are very, very delicious and just a really neat spin and different take on some yummy Mexican food. This recipe is from Taste of Home. It's a recipe that I have had for a long, 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 long time. Um, my mother-in-law used to get me a subscription to the magazines, the Taste of Home magazines. And I remember this being in one of those years ago. The first time I have ever had it to eat was made by my friend. And I just thought, wow, this is so unique. Um, and it's just really delicious. It's just a, a neat take on enchiladas. So as you can see here, we are going to town chopping up these peppers. Um, another good thing about this recipe is just standard ingredients that you would use in a typical Mexican meal. Tortillas, some onions, peppers, garlic, that kind of thing. Some just uh, traditional spices that you would use in your Mexican food most generally. So it's nice that this doesn't require a lot of uh, odd ingredients that you don't have. Most of these things, at least around here, I have on hand and can pull this together pretty quickly. All right, now that my ground beef, onions and peppers and garlic is going, I'm gonna add in a can of black beans drained and a can of these petite diced tomatoes with the green chilies. You could also just use a can of Rotel, that would also work. Now to add in the spices, we need one teaspoon of chili powder. We need a half a teaspoon of cumin. We need a half a teaspoon of salt from the little salt box. And then we need some black pepper. It's a fourth a teaspoon of that, it's good and one third cup of water. And I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Wow, we, on my new stove here, we need to adjust these flames. Um, James actually adjusted down one and it's still not going down as low as we need it to. And we need to get the yellow, I guess it is, out of the flame. That means there's too much oxygen in there. And the way the manual showed doing that, it didn't work. So, you saw that huge flame jump up there. We still trying to navigate this new stove. All right, bring this to a boil. I'm gonna stir it all together. I might add here too, of course, the entire recipe will be down below. It did call for, in addition to the black beans, a can of pinto beans, but I decided to leave those out just because I didn't have them. All right, I've got my slow cooker set up here with my bag inside, and I'm gonna just spray this lightly with cooking spray, more so on the bottom. And I don't even know if the recipe says that, but I just know that's gonna be a good idea. And then I'm gonna start layering these um, enchiladas. This is such a cool recipe, you guys. All right, I'm gonna begin layering. I am using this size tortilla, the soft taco size. Um, the recipe calls for six of these, and I think I have one, two, three, four, seven. So I'm gonna use seven just to finish this package. So I am um, gonna start building these layers. The first layer in is um, a little bit of the ground beef and bean and pepper and all that. That mixture goes on the bottom. All right, that's a sufficient layer. We don't need a bunch. 
and then you go in with your tortilla. Okay, so tortilla in on top of the beef mixture. And then next you top with cheese. The recipe calls for a cup of cheddar and a cup of Monterey Jack mixed. Well, I just have Monterey Jack. So it says about a third a cup per layer. So there's just a little sprinkling of the cheese on there. Next, I'll go back in with some ground beef mixture. There's really no precise way to know if you're gonna end up with the right amount of layers when you're done. You just hope for the best. My cheese was in the freezer. So yeah, you just kind of eyeball it and hope for the best. So let's see here, let's go in again. Another tortilla. Another shake of cheese. Get the idea. Just layer this around. in the mud let's pack up a life baby and call it a night cause the longer we stay here the harder the fight said, all right you can clearly tell that some layers have had a little bit more of this or that than the other one that's okay it all balances out in the end because when you cut down through this and serve a slice, you get all the layers. All right, I'm just going to dump this in. All right, I think that balanced out quite nicely. That was the end of my meat. Throwing on the last tortilla and giving it a little smush. And on comes the last of the cheese. Not too bad. I definitely could have been a little bit more generous with the cheese down through there. That's okay. The cheese topping is going to be awesome. All right, look at that cheesy top layer. I am getting this in the crock pot now. It's going to go on low and cook for five to seven hours until everything is heated all the way through. Okay, guys, and because I cannot hardly leave anything without a sprinkle of green, I went back in with a little bit of dried parsley flakes. Oh, that just makes it look so much better. And here is what we have about five hours later. I have some crispy edges. Everything is golden brown and heated through. I would definitely say don't overcook this one. If you think about it, everything is already cooked that needs to be cooked is cooked. So probably about four hours, honestly, would be enough time on this one. Look how awesome this is. And what I was able to do is just lift up this whole crock pot liner, sit it on my plate, and then I just clipped it with scissors all the way around and I was able to just pull the whole bag from underneath and discard that and I had it on my plate here where you can see all of these beautiful layers on these uh, crock pot enchiladas look at that I sliced it like a piece of pie served it with some sour cream on the top and some hot sauce look how pretty that is oh my goodness yes this is really delicious the flavors are great like I said it's a different way to have um, a Mexican type dish I have some shredded lettuce and fresh tomatoes, some salsa and chips. 
My husband really loved this. It's been a very long time since we've had it and it was a big win. I encourage you to give this a try for Croptober. Come back Friday for Fall Food Friday. We've been having a lot of fun with that. And as I said, I will have another crock pot recipe for you next week. Give this a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you've not. And I'll see you guys the next time. Thank you.